Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another Ajaz. Now, I tend to be a little rough on Ajaz because I haven't had too many come across my desk that I've been too fond of. I try to give each one a chance. And please understand that these are only my opinion. Just the spec section, I try, I do my best to just provide the facts of the keyboard. And the rest is my opinion. So just because I may super like a keyboard or dislike a keyboard, you should try to take away from the features that I show and see if it's something that would fit you. Um, I've reviewed so many keyboards. I'm a little over 300 keyboards at the moment, believe it or not. Yes, I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers. Honestly, I thought, you know, I was going to be doing this and I'd be lucky to get 50 or even 100 subscribers. So the fact that all of you guys enjoy watching my videos is truly humbling and honoring to me. And I truly appreciate your patronage. I will be planning something for my 5,000 celebration. It just may be a little bit after as it's going to basically coincide based on current rates with my son's graduation. So it might be a little bit after, but I'm gonna figure out some keyboards to give away. And um, I've been talking with some manufacturers and vendors. Maybe we can get a couple of uh, keyboards to send out, send out to you guys because you guys are an amazing audience. You provide me some awesome feedback and I truly, truly appreciate it. So this is for you guys. Anyway, this is an AJAZ keyboard. This is the AKL680. Now this one is a low profile keyboard. Um, I do believe it's soldered, but let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in here. All right, so basically we have a user manual. It says it's a dual mode. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't know it was wireless. Oh, 2.4. Okay, so let's see. I don't see a dongle in here. Well, we have a keycap puller. That's usually a good indicator that this is going to be a non-hot swap keyboard, but at least they did include the wire keycap holder. And here we are with the Ajaz AKL680 low profile keyboard. And again, I'm finding more and more keyboards with this little indicator. Now this one, on some of them, if they're wired, this is Windows indicator, and then we have a caps lock indicator. But what we have here is a 2.4 wireless only keyboard. This is basically a low profile soldered um, Tester 68. I mean, obviously it's got a different layout. Um, we've got one more key in there in a cluster as opposed to a column, but yeah, I could use a little work, but we'll come back to it and we'll do that. Right now we're gonna stick to the stock review. So it does look like we have three adjustable feet, and we have a battery compartment. I've already stuck batteries in here. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we've got. And we've got a Windows and Mac switch, as well as what we want to do. Let's see about Bluetooth. The Bluetooth one, it looks like it only has two Bluetooth devices, so let me... All right, that's blinking. Let's see over Bluetooth, I see it, slot one. Well, that was pretty quick. So I am connected. Oh. So it does appear that we have double shot keycaps, but they're only top and round double shot, but they don't have much space. So I can kind of see why they did that. I want to say they're PBT, but I'm not sure yet. Let's see what they measure. 1.3 millimeters, not bad for a low profile keyboard. Um, it does not appear to have any LEDs, though they are north facing. Um, you should be able to replace these out with uh, normal keycaps and it should work, but I can't, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of having a low profile. So the ping in this is, it's pretty audible does seem to have an integrated plastic plate. These switches are scratchy and they're not lubed, so they are pingy. Oh. 
mean, it has a crunchy sound, but if it, but if it, kind of wish it didn't have that after ping on there. So I'm kind of curious why it only has two Bluetooth slots. Hmm. Now, I doubt this is going to have software for it, but I'm just curious. So let me take a quick gander. All right, it appears the only thing we have for download for this keyboard is the manual. So there is no software. It runs off of double A's, which I know for some people that's going to be convenient. It does have uh, two sets of flip out feet for a total of three angles. Now, this is something that had I been part of the production team or the product team on this, I would have said, let's, you know, spend the extra, I don't know, one cent per switch, if even that, maybe half a cent per switch, and get them lubricated. Maybe just the dry film, but at least something because... because Spacebar is the only one that really doesn't have any ping whatsoever, but the rest of these key keys certainly do, and it's just, uh, I don't know, I, it could have been better. I, I, I got to say, I like the design. It does come in a few colorways that I like how they look. Um, it would have been nice to see some extra keys. It would have been even nicer if this was hot swap. Now, lubing low profile switches is not the easiest thing in the world, but it can be done. So I don't understand why there's been a few solder only keyboards that are coming out when nowadays practically every keyboard, even some of the most inexpensive ones have hot swap sockets. I mean, even if they're just Odomu or Milmax sockets, at least you have the ability to take the switches out you have and lube them and put them back in because getting rid of that and, and tuning the stabilizers for them to sound closer to this, though even that one's a little scratchy, but it sounds much better than the rest of them. I think that would be a huge boon and I mean I know that there's going to be people out there that will never change out the switches but to have the option to lube them to make them sound better as well as to you know take out the stabilizers and either tune them or replace them with some better stabilizers would be a great option but like this I'm just I just wish for a little better that's all that that that's really all that i could say but we do have i mean all the functionality that you would have in a tkl we have the function rows we have home and print screen screen lock pause as well as our um can't hear everywhere as well as our uh, navigation block we should say with the insert delete page up page down so um i like having a dedicated uh delete key I, I prefer delete above insert, but I know that somebody along the way made the decision that insert should go above delete when delete is, I mean, I use insert, but delete I use a lot more. So, but that's just, that's just me and that's neither here nor there. Just the specs. Today, we're taking a look at the AJAZ AKL680. It is a two mode wireless, low profile, 65% keyboard that runs off of two AAA batteries. It is preloaded with Huano low profile brown or red switches, which are stock and are soldered. It does also have dual shot ABS low profile keycaps. It is wireless only with two Bluetooth slots and one for 2.4 gigahertz. It has a pocket in the back for the dongle and runs off of two AAA batteries. It has integrated top case and plate made out of the plastic that the rest of the case is made out of. It does not have RGB, nor does it have software. The keyboard comes weighing in at 458 grams with the chin sitting at 19 millimeters above the typing surface in the back 
sitting at 27 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Flipping out the first pair of fold down feet, will raise the back up to 33 millimeters, changing the typing angle to 10 degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet, will raise the back up to 40 millimeters and provide for a typing angle of 14 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $58.99 from wetgeek.com. So I want to thank WhatGeek for sending me out this keyboard to take a look at it. Now, there is a 13% off coupon on their site, which would basically take about $8 off. So it would bring this down to roughly $50 before shipping and taxes. Um, but it's hard for me not to compare this to the Tester 68, which, yes, I know it's not a low profile, but other than that, you know, it's powered by AAA batteries. It has 2.4 Bluetooth and it has no LEDs. But the tester sells for about half the price. Um, actually, I've bought a tester for $12 myself um, on a super deal. And it is hot swappable, although it comes bare bones. So, I mean, you have to take that into consideration. And again, it's not low profile. Some people prefer extremely low keyboards. Um, they're closer to what you know your laptop's going to be. And this one actually appears like it would sit nice and firmly on probably, I would say, 15 inch and above laptops. Um, it might even work on a, on a 13 inch, but I'm not sure. Uh, it it is going to be better than a chiclet keyboard or you know a membrane. But being that it's soldered, and I can't say, all right, guys, let me do a stock sound test, then let me take out the switches, lube them, and let me do a sound test with the switches lubed as well as the stabilizers tuned. Because as it sits stock, it's just not... I mean, it's okay to use. It actually it doesn't feel that bad. The angle actually works for me without a... Um, a wrist rest, though I would prefer a wrist rest, although I could always bring it up if I didn't have the wrist rest to make it a little easier. But um, I like the angle of typing. I actually like these keycaps. They're like a low profile, um, almost like an XDA. Um, and I actually like the, the looks of the case. Oh, we are connected. But I'm left to say, what can I do? dampen down the pinging and what justifies uh, the list price um, now all I can do is be honest and now if this was hot swappable and perhaps came with lube switches then the price point would make a little more sense though in the current market I I just I find it hard to compare um, I mean, I can't compare this to a Keychron because a key, all Keychrons that have wireless and a low profile um, at least have USB as well. I don't know if a Keychron that does not uh, have a wired connection and you know, obviously they have software um, primarily via QMK. And I can't compare it to a Nufi because a Nufi, well, most of the Nufis are hot swappable and though they have the integrated plate you know it's it's you're dealing with an aluminum so with the air series so i just um i do want to come back to this and mod it because i, I like the looks of it and i kind of like how it feels and i mean because it's so lightweight at you know under 500 grams this is one of those easy throw-in-your-bag keyboards. Plus, we don't have to worry about battery swelling because we can just go ahead and replace the, the, the AAA batteries. Um, it does have a pocket, which seems to be magnetic. And also, the 2.4 gigahertz has the name of the manufacturer, so it's going to be a lot easier to find a, you know, to find the keyboard it goes to in case you were to lose the dongle somewhere. It did connect quickly over Bluetooth, which I like um, because I tend to favor Bluetooth because in my area, there are literally dozens of 2.4 gigahertz networks and 
it's hard to get a decent connection over 2.4. There's been a few that actually work, but for the most part, it's it's a little bit of lag. I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to come back to this keyboard. I may desolder it and then, you know, do a full mod to it and then see if it's really, you know, something that I would use. But as it sits, it's... I have a hard time um, recommending it, to be quite honest. Um, now, if it was a bit lower in price, it'd be a different story. But at sitting at nearly $60 uh, stock as it is, I just... I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to justify the price point when with the current market, because we've seen what's available in the current market, even from WhatGeek. Some, I mean, WhatGeek is a great supplier of some great keyboards, especially keyboards that, you know, you might find on AliExpress that one day is X price, the next day is Y price, because they do all sorts of crazy stuff to change the prices around. And if you're a new customer, you get even a better price. And, I mean, I've seen people actually create like a half a dozen um, new accounts over different email addresses just so that they can get the first time customer discount and get, you know, builds for 30 bucks. So, but what Geek actually offers, you know, straight pricing, they ship very fast. Um, and they have a wide selection of those keyboards that you wouldn't otherwise find on AliExpress and sometimes for much higher. I give what geek a lot of props for carrying those more obscure keyboards that, you know, will are either never see on Amazon or we're going to see on Amazon for two to three times the price that's available on AliExpress. I understand having a selection. I'm just a little bit pickier, but. I'm glad to have the opportunity to go ahead and take a look at this. I'm still looking for an Ajaz keyboard that I can say, hey, I like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. There is one Ajaz keyboard that I like. It's the 60% uh, with a knob and it has a tray for uh, a tablet or a phone. And I have used that on several trips because it's actually quite a solid little keyboard. It is soldered. It's the first version of it. But that's the only Ajaz that I've truly come across that has said that has said to me that hey i like this the price was right i think i paid 39.99 for it um it has the knob it has a pocket for the tablet it fits all of my tablets perfectly and i have used it to type out emails and just browse the web without any issue so that one does kind of have a place in my heart but since then i've kind of been looking for ajaz keyboards that i like and well I, I should say there's two that i like the ac 067 is a decent aluminum um, keyboard, but I've always found the listing price to be too high. I got it on a trade, so for me it was a it's a pretty easy deal, um, and with a little bit of modding, it actually sounds good. But I don't understand why some keyboard manufacturers are going backwards and releasing soldered keyboards. It's really something that should be a thing of the past because if you're going to buy a mechanical keyboard, one of the primary reasons that people buy mechanical keyboards is because they can tune it to their heart's desire. So if they want to change out the switches, they want to change out the keycaps, they want to mod it, that is what most people are looking for mechanical keyboards. And that other small percentage is looking for a keyboard that they can just take out of the box, put it down, and it'll work. I mean, this one, it pings when I just set it down on a surface. Pinging is not a pleasant sound. It, it kind of, it not kind of, it affects the experience. Yes, sound is not everything. Keyboard feel is important. This one feels okay. Um, I think it's nicely designed. I think it looks nice. Kind of wish their logo wasn't front and center right there, but that's just me. I mean, this can can be replaced and like i said if i come back to this keyboard uh, i may try to um stock it and make it hot swappable i want to see what switches are in there because i've seen i think i have four or five different types of low profile switches and they're all mx stem none of them are chalk so i don't know it's like every company just decides they're gonna put the pins in different spots so that only their switches will work 
but I think that the Huano ones are the same as the Otomu, if I'm not mistaken, and I ha I do have some Otomu switches. If not, maybe they're like eight or odds, and I have some of those as well. So I may socket it. If I can't, then I at least can lube it and get a, uh, a more desirable experience out of this. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the AJAZ AKL680. I do hope that you enjoyed my video. Um, a like, a subscribe, it was a long way. But if for some reason you didn't like something that I had to say, please, as long as you're respectful, I am willing to listen to any sort of feedback, whether it be positive, whether it be negative, whether it be in the middle, because I'm just trying to provide informative, honest, and thorough reviews of mechanical keyboards that are out there. And I mean, there's a new one almost every day. So I'm just trying to keep up with the pace. So again, feel free to share your thoughts. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.